welcome back. Uh, in our last lectures, we have discussed about uh, uh, different parts of electron microscope. In particular, uh, I have discussed about different electron guns and then different type of lenses. First is our condenser lens, there are objective lens and we have discussed uh, three different type of objective lens that are extensively used in scanning electron microscopy and objective aperture. Uh, three different type of objective lens for different kind of sample and condenser and objective lens both are particularly used to condense the electron beam. First condenser lens will condense the beam of the electrons to an extent and then objective le lens again will demagnify the electron beam to a finer size. The particular reason of using these lens is to make the electron beam as finer as possible so that it strikes the specimen to a small area. So, when electron beam incident on the specimen, the size of that electron beam is almost like 1 nanometer. Then we can collect the information from the 1 nanometer area. So, our resolution can be as good as 1 nanometer. Now, if we are condensing the electron beam to a very finer beam, then certainly number of electrons to be incident on the specimen will be less and less, less and less. That would decrease the prop current. If the prop current is decreases, that is less number of electrons striking the specimen, then the signal will also be less. So, how small a prop diameter could be that would provide us enough current or enough uh, signals useful to create a good image. So, in today's lecture, we will discuss about the electron prop diameter versus prop current and also what happens when electron beam interacts with the sample. So, let us uh, first discuss how to achieve a finer electron beam because that is our main objective in the scanning electron microscope. So, use a smaller and finer electron source. So, we have three uh, four main type of electron guns. Uh, one is tungsten filament gun, thermionic gun, then we have LAB6 lanthanum hexabride gun and we have field emission gun and we have short key field emission gun. In case of thermionic gun, the electron source is quite large. The diameter of the tip of the electron source is almost like 100 micron, but we want to have a smaller source diameter, then that can be easily reduced to even finer size. Therefore, field emission gun called field emission gun which gives a source diameter less than 10 nanometer is much suitable for high resolution imaging. Then a large current density, if large current density is there in our electron beam, then we can get more signal. If we get more signal, then our contrast will be more and we can get a better image. In addition to the large current density, small energy spread, spread is important, then it will have less chromatic aberration. So, uh, large current density, small energy sp spread and objective lens with little aberration, certainly lens aberration has to be low to get a finer electron beam. So, condenser lens to be adjusted in a manner that we can make a finer electron beam. So, higher the condenser lens current, more finer will be the electron beam. In addition to that objective le lens with shortest possible working distance. So, in that cases again objective lens has to be very strong, then we can have a much smaller focal length, then smaller working distance that would give us finer beam. So, certainly that should not be astigmatism because astigmatism means the focal points of the rays or electron beam coming from the lens are not uniform. So, it has to be uniform to give us a much round shape electron beam. So, these are the main parameters that has to be taken care to get or achieve a finer electron beam. So, here what you see in the diagram at the top we have an electron gun, then 
the first uh, crossover is happening here, this is the first crossover, gone crossover that is around for thermoanion it will be around 50 micrometer size, 50 micrometer diameter. So, that is quite large. Then for field emission gun this D 0 or the gun crossover diameter will be much smaller. Then we have condenser lens, condenser lens will demagnify the electron beam to further smaller to bring it to D C. Then objective lens that would make the beam to even much finer that is bringing the final diameter of the electron, uh, electron beam as D f. So, here uh, the d f can be is equal to d f is equal to our t 0 here d 0 into m 1 into m 2 these are magnification or here the condenser lens and objective lens are demagnifying. So, if we have we have smaller m 1 and m 2 then our d f could be much smaller. So, but how small could be m 1 m 2? It can be infinitely smaller not an issue, but the probe diameter will become again infinitely smaller and that probe diameter will have a much lesser probe current which will not be enough to give us enough signal. So, if we do not have enough signal coming out of this specimen then it is not uh, it will not be useful for us. So, how so in that cases how much um, uh, prop current uh, we need to get an up signal let us uh, discuss that one. So, by decreasing the prop diameter we will certainly decrease the prop current how much minimum prop current is necessary to get the information which would allow us to get a uh, SM image. Uh, if we compare the signal S max from one point on the specimen with this signal S from an adjacent point, then the contrast from this specimen will be C is equal to S max minus S divided by S max or del S by S maximum. The signal from SEM is not continuous because electron beam strikes at one point, stay for a fraction of a second collect the information that is signal then move to next point. Again there it dwells for a certain time collect the information or it produce uh, generate the signal then it will move to next. So, the signal is not continuous and if the selected number of secondary electrons that secondary electrons is our signal are obtained at each specimen pixel for a fix, uh, fixed period of time. The noise capital N is defined as the root over of n dash if average number of electrons detected from a particular spot on the specimen is n dash. So, the human eye a human eye can distinguish two points on image or on the screen if del s is greater than phi pen or it is 5 times that of the noise. We can write therefore, del s should be equal greater than phi pen to root over of 10, 10 bar uh, root over of uh, n bar. If we if we use this equation 1 and 2 then we can write contrast C is equal to or greater than del S divided by S maximum which is nothing but C is contrast is equal to or greater than 5 root over of n bar divided by n bar or contrast is greater than equal to 5 divided by 
root over of n bar or we can write n bar which is nothing but average number of electrons detected from a particular point on the screen. Average number of electrons detected from a particular spot on the specimen not on the screen is equal to or greater than 5 divided by c square. So, the average number of uh, electrons detected from a particular spot on the specimen should be greater than equal to 5 divided by c to the power square. And we know that the electron beams dwells at a particular point on this specimen for a certain period of time. If we have a frame that has 10 to the power 6 pixel and if we want to scan the frame within a second, then the beam has to dwell 5 into 10 to the power minus 6 second at each pixel. So, let us say uh, f is a frame and then uh, if the, that has a uh, 10 to the power 6 pixel, then the time the t dual time for each pixel can be f into 10 to the power minus 6 second, 10 to the minus 6 second. If the beam dwell for a longer time, then we will have more number of electrons or signal generated from this specimen. Let us say, uh, let us say there are total number of electron incidenting on the specimen is n 0. Let us say n 0 that is the number of electron incidenting on this specimen is equal to i that is the current prop current into T divided by charge E. Here I is the prop current, T is the uh, frames scan time and E is the charge. So, then which is will be equal to I into F into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by E. So, the num but the number of actual this is the n 0 is the number of electrons which is incidenting on the specimen, but it is not the actual number of secondary electrons generated from this specimen that is is the number of electrons generated from this specimen is n let us say it is n. So, n is the number of secondary electrons generated from this specimen will be equal to uh, certainly will be proportional to the n 0 and along with a term called constant. Constant is here because it depends on the electron beam specimen interaction, how efficient is the interaction between the electron beam and specimen and also the detector efficiency. If a detector is highly efficient, it will collect all the electrons, secondary electrons or all the signals generated from the specimen at each point. So, n is the number of electrons that is detected by the detector uh, and as I say A is constant which depends on A is the product of detector efficiency is the detector efficiency, detector efficiency into the yield of signal that means yield of, yield of secondary electrons let us say secondary electrons emitted from the specimen. So, detector signal is normally we will consider it as a 1 and yield of secondary electrons is between 0 0.1 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So, if we uh, to if we combine this equation let us say 2 this is let us say uh, 3, this is 3 let us say this is 4, this is 5. If we combine this equation then we will need a current, current I that we say critical current let us say I C. 
should be equal to should be equal to or greater than 4 into 10 to the power minus 12 minus 12 divided by a f c square ampere. So, here you see that critical current uh, critical current is 4 into 10 to the power minus 12 divided by a f and c is the contrast con contrast square. So, this is nothing but the minimum current we need to be useful for our microscopy purpose to get enough number of signal. So, if we have good contrast then our current is less and uh, I am that critical current could be less. If the frame scan time here f is equal to it, it is a small value um, that means uh, larger value if we have some longer dual time of the electron beam on the specimen then we have critical current less less critical current is required. Similarly, a, a is the detector efficiency and yield to the secondary electrons. If the detector efficiency is high, then we need less current, uh, critical current. So, now we see the what is the relation between minimum prop size and maximum current. Minimum prop size and maximum current that is how the primary requirement. We want the small prop size, but maximum current. So, that uh, small prop size will give us higher resolution and maximum current gives us maximum prop current will gives us the maximum signal. So, if d f the prop diameter d f is the prop diameter final prop diameter falling on the specimen who will be equal to uh, we will be equal to d t which is the theoretical diameter which is the theoretical diameter that we get achieve uh, in our case that theoretical diameter will be added up by the spherical aberration, diffraction aberration, chromatic aberration because this aberration will not make the beam to be much finer. So, they will be added up to the theoretical diameter of the prop which is the smallest one. So, now here d t d t is our theoretical diameter d t is is equal to d t means the prop diameter which is the electron beam falling on the uh, specimen that is prop which is equal to 4 i p 4 i p divided by you can write again for i p divided by uh, brightness beta pi square and alpha square. This formula we had um, um, we had uh, uh, for, uh, derived before B, uh, beta is the brightness alpha is the angle of aperture and uh, in the numerator we have four i p i p and the spherical aberration d s is equal to half c s alpha q. Similarly, uh, d d diffraction aberration is equal to 0 0.61 lambda divided by alpha. Similarly, d c is equal to c c del e by e into alpha. So, by taking this value into account uh, and using a minimum conver convergence angle alpha opti uh, optimum uh, through a mathematical manipulation, the minimum prop size can be is calculated to be d minimum is equal to k, here k is a constant which is a unit 1. C s uh, 
uh, that is the spherical aberration coefficient 2 to the power 1 by 4 lambda is the wavelength 2 to the power 3 by 4 in the bracket ip 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 is the prop current beta is the brightness lambda again wavelength 2 to the power 3 by 8 this formula we can get the minimum prop size in the voltage range accelerating voltage range of 10 to 30 kV. Now, again using the alpha optimum and neglecting the chromatic aberration because above the 30 kilo electron volt we have less chromatic aberration or negligible chromatic aberration and then maximum prop current at dp maximum current at dp this is the prop current and uh, prop diameter we can have i max is 3 pi square by 16 beta uh, dp is the prop current to the power 8 by 3 and chromatic aberration coefficient to the power 2 by 3. So, this equation, this equation tells us the maximum current we can have at a certain prop diameter dp. Now, what this says that if the prop diameter is more, dp is more, then we have more current. Similarly, uh, that is first things and prop diameter uh, can be more, uh, the prop diameter can be changed by the condenser lens, if the less, less condenser lens the strength of the condensed lens is less then prop diameter will be more. Similarly, second is the brightness if the brightness is more then we have I max will be more brightness can be controlled by the type of the guns we will use and also at the same time when we go for higher acceleration voltage then our brightness will be more. And similarly, the uh, spherical aberration coefficient C s uh, which can be reduced by increasing the uh, angle of aperture alpha and also using short working distance. So, for example, uh, of a uh, uh, sn snorkel lens uh, we can have uh, this uh, chromatic uh, the, this spherical aberration coefficient uh, that can be reduced 10 times and thus uh, the I max can be increased increased by a factor of 5 and also the D minimum can be reduced a factor of 2. So, this is the relation of minimum prop size and maximum prop current which is the desired uh, uh, requirement for best resolution in a scanning electron microscope. Now, we will discuss now how what, what happens when electron beam interacts with the specimen. This is what this is what also we have discussed earlier when electron beam incident on the sample there are several type of uh, signals generated in the scanning electron microscopy we are more interested on secondary electrons backscattered electrons that provides us 3d image or topographical image secondary electrons gives us the best topographical image on the other hand backscattered electrons gives us informa information about the phase composition elemental composition of the material present in addition to that x ray characteristic x rays are also generated with a edx detector we can also know elemental composition these are the main things so, now uh, when incident beam uh, uh, comes down uh, on the column to, uh, to strike on the specimen, uh, it uh, passes through the condenser lens, then uh, deflector coils, then objective lens and objective aperture. So, it passes through that, it almost pass uh, around uh, half a meter, around 50 centimeter before it strike the sample. So, now this whole column. Uh, the the path of the electron beam is evacuated to a vacuum of around 10 to the power minus 7 to minus 8 tor. So, at that vacuum we will have very few gas at gas molecular gas atom present uh, inside the column. So, out of like 10,000 of the electrons coming down the streams may be one or two electrons may undergo collision with the gas atom present inside the column. Otherwise, rest of the uh, electrons will be unaffected and they will come and strike or incident on the some specimen with a prop size of around 1 nanometer. So, when an electron beam of prop size around 1 nanometer is incidenting on the specimen, then information will be generated or signal will be generated not actually uh, within that 1 nanometer. So, it will be uh, the information will be generated more than 1 nanometer, little larger than that. So, when this electron uh, beam is incident and on the specimen, then it will 
do different type of collision there can be elastic collision or inelastic collision. So, when the energy of the scattered electrons inside the specimen is same as that of the incident energy here incident energy is around uh, 0 0.0.5 0 1 kV to around 30 kV incident energy uh, they can uh, can be incident on the uh, they can be uh, uh, penetrating the sample then it will uh, there are two type of collision one is elastic collision elastic scattering where the energy of the scattered electrons energy remains same energy conservation. On other hand there can be inelastic collision in elastic scattering where energy will be different. So, incident energy and the scattered electrons will have a different energy. And the uh, elast elastic scattering depends on the atomic number uh, of the mater material present, atomic number of the material present, higher the atomic number more will be the elastic collision. And the elastic collision uh, or elastic scattering cross section Q will be almost uh, proportional to the Z square, Z is the atomic number, it will be like that. Uh, and this elastic scattering is less less for the uh, low atomic number uh, materials and the and their uh, and they uh, elastic scattering also uh, deviates more from the incident angle uh, when they uh, they undergo collision. The, the region to which uh, this uh, uh, electron beam penetrates into the sample is called interaction volume. So, the region to which the electron beam penetrates in the sample is called interaction volume. So, we will discuss more on the interaction volume in our next lecture. So, what happens in the interaction volume and from where secondary electrons are generated and backscattered electrons are generated that we will discuss. Uh, not that secondary electrons have energy less than uh, 50 electron volt. Uh, on the other hand, backscattered electrons have energy greater than 50 electron volt. Thank you.